You are in Waterford Township, Michigan, covering approximately 36 square miles with a population of 72,000 people. This is the story of how Waterford's water treatment facility uses GE Prophecy software for electronic management of their system. Waterford is about 72,000 people, um, and, and what we do is we, we get our water from groundwater. So we've got 18 uh, wells, raw water wells, that then feed that raw water to water treatment plants where we do iron removal, manganese removal, other, other metals type removal, and then we pump it into the distribution system where people use it, and, um, and then it goes into wastewater where uh, basically uh, you know, it goes through the sewer system and then ultimately to an interceptor sewer which then goes to the city of Detroit. We chose to tell this story in Waterford because although Waterford is not a particularly large facility, it is considered a top-of-the-line system and has received dozens of national awards for its facility management, design, safety, and IT and technical practices. Prophecy is um, the telemetry that uh, use it, that talks to the water and sewer system. We've got, I think, probably over a thousand uh, points of data that we're collecting. We're bringing in from the field. We have 90 sites, I believe, between water and sewer sites. And at each of those sites, there's tele there's uh, devices uh, reading pressures and flows, temperatures, uh, analyzing analyzers for water quality. That information is being brought back here through the GE uh, software. This here is kind of our this this would be like our water treatment plant overview. So this is the township basically right here that you see all right in here, and then. These are the individual water plants that we have in the township. So for instance, this is um, a plant that we'll be going to later today. This is treatment plant 31. And these are all the things that we monitor and, uh, are monitoring from the, that treatment plant. For instance, uh, right now here's the plant pressure, 48 PSI. Um, and then these are all digital points. We know, we even know if somebody pulls the emergency shower thing out there, the eye wash, those kinds of things. So uh, we have generator information all that kind of stuff. Um, we even know the power stuff happening out there at this plant. We know that, for instance, phase A is 489 volts, phase B is 490 volts, phase C is 490 volts. We, we know the power factor for the site. We monitor all that, um, and, and those are actual modules that our SCADA system is using. Right now in our system, at this particular time of the day, a total of 3.9 million gallons per day are flowing out of our tanks. Really no treatment facilities are running right now, so we aren't really producing any water. We're flowing out of the tanks. I, I actually can check that. And that's what this is kind of telling me right here, the, in the green, what treatment plants are running. If I come over here now, and we actually have the, the capability of knowing what our instantaneous system demand is. So this, this value right here, 6.7 MGD, that is the water that is being consumed in the system right now. This is our alarming package that just popped up. This is what's sending out the emails and those kinds of things. Um, generator runtime and those kinds of things. So. Uh, for instance, this treatment plant or this sewer station since midnight tonight has pumped 1.6 million gallons. And then for the year, since January 1, it's pumped almost 87 million gallons. Every other week, every, every permanent generator that we have automatically turns on, automatically exercises, goes under load, and our guys get emails telling them that the generator has started, that the generator's, the, the, the emergency transfer switch is switched over. Well, this is from our AVL system. This is telling me that this is one of our electricians. He's actually um, entering this particular location, so we know that we're there as well through our AVL system. You know, our guys can literally get uh, an email telling them that there's somebody entering the plant, which is coming from the SCADA system. But they, if we've also got cameras out there, they're also going to get a little video or a little pictures packaged up with them too. As you can see here, this isn't manned. Um, everything's automated. So um, people get emails telling them, for instance, like if. For instance, if the power factor at this particular site uh, got to a, a level that we didn't want it to be, um, they would get an email telling them that uh, the power factor is not, not the way that it should be. I mean, everything's here. How much water we have in here, how much water is going into it. And so the great thing about it is I know I'm producing enough water. I'm not just maintaining uh, what the usage is. You know, We're not just coasting along. We're actually putting some water into storage. So what's great about it is, is Right now we have enough treatment plants running. We don't have to run everything. So right there is a huge savings. We're um, automated in the sense that we know if this valve is open or closed, we can close this valve automatically through the computer system. This here, uh, if we have an operator that gets in trouble here, they can actually push this button 
and it will stop everything that's happening in the plant. We'll also send an email to people letting them know that there's an emergency. There's so many things that we know now that we didn't know back then, starts and stops of water or pumps. Uh, once we got that coming back through our SCADA system, I mean, we saved I'm going to guess easily hundreds of thousands of dollars. Can you can you can simulate the system now as a check. You can also use it to project and design new new systems. We use we've used it to design uh, water loops, which is a uh, basically where you build a pipe to go between two segments of your water system that are isolated, and, you, and, it, and it increases the efficiency of the water to get through and improves water quality. Now I know exactly what's wrong, and so do my guys out in the field, which is fantastic you know when they're on call at home they look at their phone and they're like oh I have a pump fault at this one station you know and they don't have to come here anymore they know exactly what the, what the problem is they're prepared for it and they can leave their home after hours and they go right to that site and they know what's wrong and literally minutes can mean thousands of dollars if there's a big issue uh, you know if somebody can get there five minutes earlier and avoid a big problem you know it's 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 worth its weight in gold it's about accountability. It's about being able to solve problems. It's about being able to tell the public and tell the board, you know, um, this, this is what's happening and this is why. These, you know, we, I could tell you right now in a couple of minutes how much power failures cost us last year. I mean, um, I, we have an annual report that's 80 pages thick. We mine that from our computer maintenance management system. I mean, it's about driving that and, and, and putting these systems together to give us that information. You know, one little piece of information, in some case, he might see a pressure spike come through. But you know what? He may have to look at four or five different things in order to figure out what caused that pressure spike. So where you are now is inside the lab itself at the, the treatment facility. As you can see, here's a screen that allows us to go through. Um, this is interfacing with the, um, uh, the SCADA system at the site. So like, for instance, this is operational info, which is giving me flows and pressures and all of those kinds of things. If we come in here further, uh, I can look at the site's power monitoring stuff. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking. I'm not liking what I see with the DO here. So I think we need to check the airflow rate coming into these vessels and make sure that everything's uh, the way it's supposed to be. Okay, I'll get right on it. Take care of it. I'm an electrician by trade, but now with skate, I'm more into the instrumentation electronic field. Before, I didn't touch a computer. Had no use for it. I was just basically an electrician. Something broke and went out and. Hard knocks, find out the problem and fix it. Now it's all informational. Like I said, I can do my troubleshooting before I even get out there. These guys basically didn't know anything about SCADA when yeah. we started. They were great electricians, but you know what? Now they know an awful lot about SCADA and, and, and RTUs and PLCs, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, they hook up laptops out in the field now, and they can do some diagnostic stuff. Before, I would have to go out and diagnose a problem, sometimes in the rain, snow, and it would take hours. Now I know what the problem is. I take the parts out with me, to do the repair right there. If SCADA has an alarm, it's gonna tell us. It's gonna say, I have a problem. That's what SCADA does, you know. It, it lets us know one of our facilities has an issue. And the information we get back is unlimited. As much as we want to program out there, we can get the information back. We can trend it and go back a month from now and see what caused the problem today. All of this information, this is a 24 hour period, okay? So I can drag this back and get various parameters that I'm looking at here, like the tank level. In fact, let me go to a better trend for that. Let me just go to the overview. So these are our three tanks, basically. And um, so if I drag back here, you can see that it, they got to the, uh, a high here of 26.94 before things started draining out of this particular tank again. The history is huge. I mean, operational history, that's that's kind of that what we talked about earlier with the institutional stuff. You know, it's. We had a situation, you know, we had a really high demand day, and, and these kind of things happened during that day. So, you know, engineering wise, we kind of like try to program for the worst case scenario, you know, and if we can program for the worst case scenario, in general, it's going to meet the criteria for general operations every day of the week. So, if I want to come in here and I want to know what my water plants all produced last year, this is mining the data from GE's prophecy on my historian. So, basically, you can see here is our big producer for the year looks like it was treatment plant 28 one that did 280 million gallons but we produced a total of 2.7 billion gallons of water last year so that that helps us to get into our calculation of, of water efficiencies like how much water did we pump and how much did we actually meter at the property 
So we compare those two values to get water efficiencies and those kinds of things. And um, like I said, we, we also use that number to go back and we compare like energy costs and chemical costs and labor costs and all that. So we know how much we pumped. Well, how much of these other things cost us? How much is it costing us per 100 cubic feet of water? This is my yeah. baby. Yeah. This, because to me, out of all of the systems and all the technology that we have here, if, if I could only keep one, yeah. it's going to be the monitoring and control. GE Workflow software we view as the glue to bring these other systems together, the, like the Neptune system, um, so that we can pull that information out to create a workflow process that basically will then direct uh, field personnel or, or even the public what to do in these types of events. And we can use workflow to actually notify them through email and those kinds of things. In the old days, they always called um, the water industry the silent service. You know, the less trans, you know, the more we were hidden away or the less that we were known about, the better. We don't really take that approach. We have a lot of data and a lot of information and systems that we want to avail to the public. Um, there's nothing to hide. They can come in and see a daily history of their usage. Our rates are on the website, and we want to do everything that we can to help them. We run everything 24-7, obviously. People use water all day long. Uh, we don't man anything um, after hours. It's all automated, and, and everybody gets mm. emails from the system and those things. So it basically allows us to leverage how we operate and maintain our system, and without it, uh, you, you, we'd probably have to have tw at least twice the staff or more than we have now. It, it costs money to, to build the infrastructure. Um, the infrastructure is there either either way. And, and the way I look at it is you can build infrastructure and continue to build infrastructure, but why not optimize how that infrastructure runs? If you begin to optimize how the infrastructure runs, then basically you're going to begin to re reduce your costs. So we, we do look at the metric of how much it costs us to produce 100 cubic feet of water. And we, want, we monitor that very closely. And um, through the use of technology, in those kinds of things, we're able to keep that cost basically at the same level as it was in 1992.